Right. Welcome back. So in the previous videos, we have discussed about the data transformations, right? Uh, we discussed about uh, malware and data cleaning also we covered. Okay. And also we converted the data frame into certain file format and stored it in a, somewhere in our project folder. Okay, those things were done in the previous videos. Now, in today's video, we are going to discuss about how to write our data frame into the Hive Meta Storage, as well as how to write our data frame into the local SQL database. I am here considering the MySQL as a database. Okay. So before going further, let us discuss some theoretical part about the Hive. Okay. And you people know about the database, right? Majorly, database is to store the data. Okay. At a high at high level, when you discuss the database is nothing but to store the data. And there we have the relation database and non-relation database. Okay. Relation database mostly consists of the tables. Non-relation database, no, those are nothing but Dynamo DB. Okay. Those are majorly used to store the file format system. Okay. They don't they doesn't follow any kind of structure. Whereas relation table, they follow the table structure. Right? You know about it, I hope. So let's discuss about the hive. So in the when in, in the Azure series, okay, we discuss about the data warehouse. I think in a SCD part one video, data warehouse, what is the data warehouse? What is the need of the okay? All things was covered in the Azure is I mean Azure series in the SCD type two part one. Okay. So data warehouse is nothing but a giant database. Okay, which is useful to store the historical data and uh, useful to prepare the analysis for the business insights and all. Now, let's discuss about the Hive. Hive is also a data warehouse. Okay, data warehouse built on the Hadoop ecosystem. What is the Hadoop? So, so far we discuss about the Spark. Okay or PySpark, whatever, okay. Previously, in golden days, not in the golden days, uh, 20, before 2010 or uh, around, okay, they were using the Hadoop. Hadoop work also the same, okay. You can consider it as a father version for the Spark, okay, Hadoop. It has the cluster and it will distribute the work among the different workers and all, right. So at that time, they developed a data warehouse in the Hadoop ecosystem and naming it as a Hive Meta Storage or simply Hive. Majorly it is designed for the processing of data and querying of the data when it comes to the higher volume. Okay, to process and query in the larger data sets, Hive Meta Storage are very well suitable. Okay, when you are working in a Spark environment or a Hadoop environment. Why because, why because, like I said, Oh, in PySpark, it is, it is uh, we have the cluster and the workers out there, okay? Due to that, uh, data processing would be very fast. Processing speed, speed was very fast. So, now writing our data, I mean data frame as a table in a high meta storage, okay? Then we can easily query that table and also we can process the data in very fast manner. Okay, time will going to be reduced because of that. Okay, storing the data as a table is nothing but a hive table. Okay, so same query, okay, same language only, SQL language only. We are going to use it in a hive. But the difference is, hive is a data warehouse built on Hadoop. Okay, useful for when you want to process the data, large data sets. Okay. When you want to process the large data sets. Similarly, we have the database. When you want to process the smaller, uh, smaller kind of data sets, then the data will, will database would be preferable. Also, uh, when you are uh, analysis team, okay, are using the SQL integrated tools, SQL integrated tools are nothing but uh, Power BI, for example, okay. If the analysis team you are using that one or be as one of the analytic tool, then it is preferable to store our data in a 
database okay sql database right so it's ultimately depend on the project our project requirement okay all the details were given at the time of documentation where to store and all so for this is for the practice right so we can we will look into it uh, how we can store the data in the hive as well as in the database here we are considering the mysql as a database so these are uh, matters related to hive and all okay Okay. So what was the task we need? need to write data frame into hive as a hive data. okay in hive also we are going to use the sql kind of language only okay task need to write data frame into mysql database Okay. using jdbc driver okay using jdbc driver so these tasks are going to be written in a file that is nothing but persist persist on this is the file here we are going to perform the task okay so let's define a function um, data high Persist one, okay, and it is going to take a couple of parameters, okay. Spot data frame, data frame name, partition by, and mode, okay. Why Spark? See, generally, they will follow this code. Spark dot SQL create a database so that it will create a database in the hive environment. Spark dot SQL. Okay, that's why we take in the parameter called Spark and the data frame. So ultimately, we need to write a data frame, right? So we have want to require that data frame and then data frame name. Okay. Partition by so in the previous video we discussed about the partitions, repartition, colleges, and all. Right. So partition is nothing but logical chunk of data, logical division of data. So it will create a subdirectories. Okay. So let you can look it out here. This is the hive hive storage. Okay, created, and this is the database in the DFCT. I given partition by state name so that whatever the data related to state name andhra pradesh or telangana okay will be under one folder so when state name equal telangana telangana details would be in one folder so that it is going to reduce the time at the time of scanning and all and at the time of analysis point and all. okay so let's proceed let's say spot.sql Let's create a database. Set cities. Okay. For the cities data frame, right? Next part, we have to use this data frame. Otherwise, sorry, we have to use this database. Otherwise, it is going to file in a default database. Okay. So, use cities. Yep, dot write dot. I want to save it as a table. So for that, I am going to use save as table. Okay. Data frame name, comma, 
partition by equal to partition by okay i am going to pass it in a driver level and mode equal to okay here no need to return any data file right next thing similarly we need to create for the describers just change the database name describers Subscribers. So generally on partition, on which column we need to perform partition will be given at a, a project level, I mean at the stage of project. Generally they will do on the date, okay, if we have the date column, they will do the date wise partition, okay. Otherwise they will consider any kind of uh, columns which are going to give the a best result. Like uh, if you do partition on city name, we will get so many folders, right? That's not, uh, does not look good. Okay. If you partition by state, uh, you will, we, will, we will encounter a little bit less folders compared to partition by on city. Okay. So if you partition by date, what will happen if we run the file? Okay. Whatever the records will get for today will be in one folder with a date folder. If you run the file again, whatever records come from tomorrow will be created with the tomorrow state. Then after, go to driver. So, import, okay, you know it, right? From persist, I want all the function, import start, then all the function, data high score persist to one, Spark equal to Spark, okay. DF equal to we have the data report data report one. We want to use that one. Next, the data frame name. Uh, data frame name. What we have to use? Anything you would wish. DF underscore city okay partition partition by equal to I want to do it state at project level everything will be documented okay on which we need to apply the partition it's not our wish okay yeah. okay mode append is nothing but whatever the data coming that has to append to the current data instead of override See this data frame DFCT will look like this DFCT. Okay. Now, similarly, for the prescribers, DF report 2 is there, right? Okay. I want to partition on uh, prescriber state itself. And the mode is the append. Okay. So this is the logical part. We need to write it in a persist.py. Okay. Let's go to PyCharm. Go to persist. And for this persist file, we need to write the custom loggers. Okay. As you all know, right in the previous videos and all, we are doing that one. Okay. Go to loggers. Add the loggers. Okay. Mention the file name persist. And then customize those logs for persist file and keep level as warning. I want everything written in a file. That's why I'm using file handler. Call name is the persist. Okay. Propagate to zero is nothing but I want only one log statement. Okay. Not to print two or three times. Same log statement. Okay. Go to persist. Right. You all know this one, these things. So I already written the I mean, method okay loggers dot warning right everything okay now
sorry so let's define this method is for the city state of frame okay i did not define a method for the prescribers let's define that one okay i'm going to copy these things Persist. Describe it. Okay. Spot data frame, and I need to create a database for the prescribers. Okay. And I'm going to use that database so that this table is going to create in a prescriber data frame. Okay. Just do some file formatting, reformat the file. Okay. It's look good. Go to driver. So we have to import this one. Okay. From persist, mm -hmm. I want to import all the files. Okay. So yesterday we covered up to here, right? Now write some login, writing into the hive table. Okay. Let us say. Data high persist spark equal to spark, right? DF data frame, sorry, data frame equal to DF report one and DF name equal to I'm going to do DF city partition by equal to I want to. To partition on the state name and the mode equal to append. Okay. Similarly, we have another method for the prescribers. Okay, call that method data hive access prescriber. Okay, copy these parameters. Page store here. Okay, instead of DF report one, we are going to use DF report and DF prescriber partition by prescriber state. DRC state. Okay. Now I'm going to delete, delete this. Okay. More important thing, I forgot to tell about it. Okay. We have the Spark session, right? Spark is equal to Spark session dot builder dot master. Okay. App name. Okay. Okay. This is the Spark session code, right? Now we are going to write it in a high storage. We are going to say the spark right please enable the hive meta store so that we can write the data into the hive so by using this command enable hive support okay enable hive support so that by writing this one spark will understand the user request it to enable the hive support so that he can write the data into the high meta storage. Okay. <coughs> so here you can also. Okay. So we'll discuss about things uh, config when we are dealing with writing the data frame into the database. Okay. Now everything is good. I'm going to delete this one. Delete. Now run the run this driver application.
in the next video we will discuss about the multi trading concept okay that is really helpful at real time why right? because we don't have the single source files we can have the multiple files okay at the time of multiple files with the help of multi trading we are reducing the processing time okay Yes. So the data is written successfully into the Hive Meta Store. Okay. As you can see, this is the cities.db. Okay. Database what we created. Okay. Prescribe.db. The database what we created. Okay. So here, DFCT, you can observe the data is partitioned under the name of the state name. Similarly, in the prescribed data set. Okay. And the total processing time is 165.75 seconds. And the next thing, and the next task one is completed. Now let's look into the task two. Okay. So, what was it about writing the data frame into a database? So, like I mentioned previously at the starting of the video, if your data set is relatively small and uh, the analyst is going to use the SQL based tools okay for processing and all then we have to store our data in a, a database okay that is one of the consideration but at project level everything will be pre-declared okay predefined everything is predefined okay either you have to write into a database or not that may be any database my SQL or SQL server or Oracle generally SQL server and Oracle okay they will consider so to writing writing into database we are going to use jdbc driver okay we are going to use the jdbc driver okay so for mysql we have the mysql connector jdbc is nothing but java connector okay java database connector uh, something uh, eight 8.00 let's i did not remember the name okay dot jar okay this is the jar file we are going to use to connect the mysql for uh, microsoft ms i mean for oracle it is different for the uh, sql server it is different okay and this is the connect okay you can search it in a google also like mysql jdbc Try one okay so go to official website and you can download it 
we'll go to download page and select this one okay so i already installed that mysql okay connector so in the youtube you can you can encounter many videos regarding how to download the mysql jar file and all okay so this is my folder mysql connected java in this folder i have the jar file now i am going to keep this jar file let's copy i'm going to keep this jar file in our project in our project structure okay go to python project 7 okay so i already kept here okay whatever you copied the jar file paste it here right then we are going to give the configuration capability to the spark session so that we can say spark we have the mysql jar connector while creating the spark object make ensure that it is going to be connected okay so similarly for enable high support we have the another configuration for mysql jar or any kind of jar files to connect jar files okay. config in the config you have to say spark dot private dot give the extra class path extra class path uh -huh. and then name of the connector okay what is the name of the connector we have mysql connector java 8.0.2 okay like this you will get a configuration to the spark object okay now we are going to write a method okay here you don't need to worry either i need to create a table in a mysql and i need to insert the data nothing to worry about it okay here in mysql no need to create tables for data frames right We are creating tables dynamically, okay? In the name of data frames, what you will write into the MySQL database. Okay? So let's do that, okay? So let us assume we have a database called data so open my screen my screen and there in the my screen we are going to create a database okay and we are going to utilize the database okay So let's create a database. Create database data pipeline two. Okay. Database success fully created. Now I'm going to replace the one. Use data pipeline. Okay. Okay. So let's write a function of persist data underscore mysql pass the parameters spark okay data frame data frame name url database table mode username for the database and password for the database this username and password will get it from the environment variables file okay or there some for some project they will give they will use the inscription kind of code okay and they will give only access to the particular people only okay why because this username and password are very uh, what we can say very sensitive data 
it won't give for each and every bit. Okay. So for now, we are going to keep this username and password. Even you can pass this URL in a get environment available. Okay, we'll do that one. Now in the function, we are going to say, I need to write the data frame. That's why df.write format jdbc. Format jdbc is nothing but with the help of jdbc, I'm connecting to MySQL. With the help of jdbc, I'm writing a data frame into the tables. Okay. Dot option URL. You are option DB table. Come on, DB table. Okay, that mode mode is nothing but a mode again. Okay, I either I'm going to mention up and or over, right? Okay, generally we'll follow the up and. Okay, next option, user, comma, user, option, password, password, okay, finally, save the table, okay, this is the code we are going to follow to write the data frame into the database, okay. So if you are got confused about my username and password, okay, go to MySQL, click on this home. There you can observe root. Okay, root is your username, right? And this username and password will mention in the get environment variable file. OS dot user equal to root. Okay. Similarly, OS dot NVRON password equal to mention the password. Okay. Next thing, OS dot Okay, mention the URL. Okay, or else you can pass it at a time of in the driver itself. Okay, not an issue. Okay, this URL generally looks like URL generally looks like how it is going to be. This is constant. You can you can Google it and you will get this URL. Okay, JDBC MySQL. Okay. So if you are using the Oracle, you have to change it MySQL to the Oracle. Slash local host double three zero six. Okay, this database running on my local host with the port of double three zero six, and I need to write it into the database. Right, we created data pipeline. Okay, this is the database. Okay. In this database, we are going to write the table. So let's go to PyCharm. In the Persist file, okay. so I have written the same thing Spark data frame. Okay. Right. This is the method. Okay. Now go to environmental variables. Okay, mention the username and password. Okay, mention the username and password like this. Then after go to driver. Now it is in a Persis, right? Previously we imported everything from the Persis, okay? So let's define it. Persis data MySQL, okay? Spark, called Spark. 
df equal to i want to write df report one okay df name df underscore cd comma url url I am working on a database data pipeline too. Okay, give that name here. This is the database name. Okay. What next? Now mention the table name DB table equal to let's say city data frame. Okay. So by this we have created a table dynamically. Now more equal to append okay. next thing user okay so this user and password we will get it from the environmental variables files okay to access anything from the environmental variables file we are going to say gav is nothing but a alias name for the environmental variable file okay like this okay that's good. Now we are going to run this application. Everything is good. Now run the driver. So you can search in YouTube or Google. Okay for downloading the MySQL connector. Okay, how to download that one. Okay, I have I shown you how to kept in our project structure and how to associate with the Spark object. Right? So, let us create Spark, okay. Like this, config spark.driver external class Spark, okay. MySQL connector Java, like this. It will take some time. So why multi-trading is concept involved is because in general, in any project, we don't have any single files, okay? We can encounter with multiple files, okay? At the time of dealing multiple files, okay? With the help of multi-trading, we are going to reduce in the time for creating the data frames for the multiple files, right? That's one of the option is there. Probably in the next video, we will discuss about multi-trading. Okay, first we will discuss about the multi-trading. There we will cover the basic necessary topics for us. Okay, I know multi-trading is a vast concept, but we will discuss only necessary concept for us. And then we are going to implement in our PySpark application. Probably in the next two or three parts, we are going to complete the series. Yeah, it is total taken 172 seconds, okay, for running this application. Let's go to database. What is the database we created? Database pipeline 2, right? Sorry. Let's refresh. Database pipeline 2. 
check it out the tables city data frame is there okay let's write a query select store form data pipe into that city data frame okay run this query so like this we return our data frame into a table dynamically. We did not create a tables. Okay, that's the beauty here. Okay, now the last topic. Okay, with this, we are going to end this video. That is nothing but adding file name to our data frame. Okay, adding the file name to our data frame. Have you ever wondered, okay, like I previously mentioned in a real time, we will encounter 20 to 30 files, okay. So we know, okay, uh, we don't know which data related to which file. Now in this part, we have the concept of adding the file name, okay. With that, you can uh, add the file name to the data frame, okay, so that we can uh, easily understand okay and we can easily analyze okay this data frame from the this file right so it will look like this okay suppose id product price and uh, you can say file name okay like this file one dot csv file dot csv file dot csv like this the data frame would be will be created okay so that thing also we are going to cover in the next part okay so that's it for today's video in the next video we will discuss about the multi-trading concept and also adding a file name to our data frames okay